My guest today is Bill Wagner. Bill, how you doing? Pretty good, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm All really right. enjoying this conference here. Yes. And um, so what, first of all, tell me what do you do for a living? So what I do is I primarily write the C-sharp documentation for docs.microsoft.com. Huh? Uh, our team is responsible for all of the .NET documentation, so any of your technology and friends viewers mm -hmm. looking at anything on docs.microsoft.com, anything under .NET, that's our team. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. Um, and you've been on technology and friends before, but I not have. for a really long time. Not for a while. Yeah. That's great to have you back. What, do you want, what are we going to talk about today? So we're going to talk about something coming new to C Sharp 8, okay. which hasn't shipped yet, but it's it's a big feature, so I want well, people to be aware of it. What version of C Sharp are we on right now? We are on 7.3. Okay. This is always a confusion because it's the .NET Framework version mm -hmm. X and, and uh, C yeah. Sharp version yep. Y. Everything versions on its own. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> all right. 7.3 and 8 is coming soon, and eight it's going to have something yeah. awesome like 8 is what? coming next. Okay. So I don't, don't, let's not say soon. All right. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's coming. It's, it's, it's coming. Let's just say right it's now, coming. Yes. So C Sharp 8 is going to introduce something called nullable reference types. Hmm. Okay. So any of your viewers that have done development has probably seen the null reference exception. Okay. It, it I happens. have. I've seen we every exception that. That, right. that there is to see. But by far the most common one is null reference exception. Right. Okay. So what we want to do is make it so that that's harder to have happen in your code. So that hmm. hopefully the compiler can find out, hey, here's something that should have been null checked that wasn't. Ah, okay. okay. So it's uh, the catch it at compile time rather than at right. runtime. So now if you think of value types, like say an integer. All right. So an int cannot be null. Okay. If you want to support null as a concept on an int, you make it int question mark. All right, and we got that right? actually in like version, in version four two. or five or something. Yeah. Like that. Right. Now, if it's a reference type like string, right now a string says this maybe could be null, maybe not. You have no way of saying in the code what you meant as hmm. to whether or not this class automatically assigns this variable. It should never be null. There's no way it's going to be null, and we don't need to check it everywhere. Or our design says maybe this is null, null supported, so anytime you access it, you should check. Right. Right? And if you think about nullable uh, value types, the compiler helps you. Right. If you try to add two nullable ints, you know, that would throw an exception, or you can do some dot has value checking and you'll get, you can get some warnings to so say, with, you know, re this, with reference checking, work. currently we have nothing like that? We have nothing like that. So mm -hmm. now what this will do, and this is why this is a really important change, is that string type, the language will say, this should never be null. So I'm going to do a static analysis of everything in your code, and if it's a string type or any reference type, All right. we will assume you meant that that should never be null. And if you want it to be null, you should change that declaration to a string question mark. Oh, or whatever so a string question mark didn't exist before. It and does, now it right, does. and now it will. Uh, wh where, where does this happen? Does this happen in real this, time as you're, as you're typing, like, with the, like the squiggly nope. lines do, or is this something uh, that you... So when you turn it on, Oh. you'll start to get warnings because everything you have right didn't use this feature right. so we will assume every reference type that you have anywhere in your code should never be null okay okay so if we can't verify if the compiler as it looks at your code and does a static analysis can't verify this is never null hmm. you'll start to see red squiggles okay and then you have a couple design just choices to make now, first of all, when you turn it on, those are going to be warnings because we know this is a breaking change. Right. We don't okay. want to break code. So that we don't used want to, to just all of a sudden. You know, gee, we use a new version of compiler. Here's a thousand errors. Right. No. So you turn it on. No, we've done that before. No, we've never done that. <laughs> we've never changed <laughs> maybe the language. Maybe it's not the compiler. Yes, the compiler but, uh, has never done something <laughs> I've had, where I've had you know, uh, things break because I've upgraded that. something yes. somewhere. <laughs> yes. And so when you turn this on, you'll get warnings when you turn it on for different projects or for different files. Okay, so okay. If, you, if you choose so to you now, start uh, to I'll say, it clean up your code. Or make right. It, then you and can then do so. you can start to modify that code to say, okay, this is a, this, this type, this this variable should be null based on my design, mm -hmm. or may be null based on my design, or this variable can never be null. Okay, and, and how, how do we tell the, the compiler? If it the could be null, list. we say it's a string question mark. Okay. If it's never supposed to be null, it's a string. Oh, okay. Right? And then, or if it's never supposed to be null and it really wasn't, the compiler is going to find warnings that go, you know, you're using this thing that could be null and it's... It's never null. It, 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 you never checked. Oh. Right? Hmm. Or if it's never null, it will go, I can't verify that this is never null. Maybe you should initialize it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should check before you're assigning it to something that could be null. And it will find places where maybe you could introduce that null reference exception if you're not careful. Hmm, okay. So the idea is this is going to be a big, a big help to hopefully make it that you can write safe code so that it never, you don't see those null reference exceptions. 
I see. And we have, so, okay, so we have this already for value types. Right. We, we added the question mark yep. already. We've never had it for reference types. Right. Tell me the use case. So what the use case is, that? well, any of your code. Uh, so let's take a simple example that Maz has used in a lot of his demos. Let's say I have a person type. Okay. Now, right now I would have, say, three strings to represent properties for a first name, a middle name, and a last name. Okay. Some people don't have middle names. Right. So in my design, what I really want to express is first name should never be null. Okay. Last name should never be null. And uh, so the middle I, name is null. middle name, maybe that's null. Right. Because okay. some people don't have that. So my constructors would be forced to set first name and last name. If I'm going to assign to last name, it has to be assigned to something that can't be null, or it has to be null checked to make sure I don't do an assignment to null. Right. Right. Or so have a default value. Would, right. Well, the default value would have to be non-null. Right. Right. So it would have to perform those checks. Middle name would have no checks like that. Mm. However, anytime you want to access the middle name, the compiler would warn you and say, you know, middle name, that could be null. You should check to make sure it's, it's not null before you use it. Right. Right. So that's what happens. Hmm. Now, the reason the syntax we chose... Is the syntax just similar to the value types? We just put a yes. question mark on... Afterwards. And the reason we did that is the only way to do this is a non-breaking change is to introduce three different reference types. What we have today, which is maybe it's null and maybe it's not. Okay. A new syntax for it should never be null, and a new syntax for, well, it's it could be null. Hmm. Okay. okay. And we didn't want to. I do would that. call that the, the uh, three bears. Right. So that's the idea of we have one Program problem. Model. So now let's <laughs> introduce <design> <laughs> two more problems. <laughs> And that would really slow adoption, right? Because who's going to go through everything, sweep all their code, and change everything? Okay. So I said, you know, the syntax is a lot cleaner if we do this. Hmm. Now the question is, and what we're working really hard to do, is to make sure that where you've done all kinds of work to do null checks, the analysis is such that it's fine. It should mostly find out that, yes, you've done all the proper null checks. We don't have to put warnings anywhere. So hopefully code that was really well written or has really been well tested and things can't be null, there's already checks. Right. So it should compile pretty cleanly. Right. Where you haven't done it, you'll get some warnings, mm -hmm. which are pointing out potential bugs. So hopefully that's a good thing. And where your design means something different, yes, this is supposed to be null, well, you're going to need to put that question mark. And then that pushes the warnings to places where it's accessed. So we try to make the best, uh, best use case out of something that's going well, we had a type system from version 1.0 where references could be null or maybe not, and we never knew which, mm -hmm. to now we're going to say that for every variable, you should express whether this should be null or not. And then let's clean up the code around it, and let's try to provide warnings and a path for you to get to that world where null reference exceptions just don't ever happen in your application. I like that. So it's, a, it's kind of a breaking change, but it's a, a right. pretty safe as far as And that's where, go. so before it's officially released, there's going to be some free releases where you'll be able to try this with a NuGet package or try this by turning it on in some of our CTPs and just see mm -hmm. what happens if you turn it on and get an idea of where your code is and see what kind of things you, you might need to start addressing now okay. to be ready to turn it on with minimal impact when it's finally completely released. And use the example of strings, but it's not just strings. It's, it's not just strings. any it's reference type. anything so that is a reference object, type. for example. Yeah. But List of T is a reference type. That uh -huh. could be null or not. Or you know, a customer Basically object. just about anything, as long as you declare it as a class, uh -huh. that could be null. All right, and you, uh, you sort of hinted at this idea that uh, we don't yet know when the next version of C Sharp we will We don't be have out, any date. But is set. this feature available right now that people can play with? Um, right now there is a CTP you can get that just plugs in that just adds the nullable feature. Okay. Um, I will have to let you add it to the show notes where it is because okay. I don't have the That'd link right off the top of my head. So I'll make sure I get that to you. Mm -hmm. And when we start doing public previews for Visual Studio 16, that will have C-sharp 8 preview in it. So once that happens, then that would be a, another way to try it. Okay? That's I don't awesome. have a date for that either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Bill, thank you so much. Uh, I know you're, uh, you're here at, um, speaking at, where are we again? We're in we Orlando, are Microsoft Florida, Ignite. Ignite. In Orlando. Yeah. And you're just still doing a little bit of speaking, right? Not as much as I'm you used to. I'm not speaking here. I still uh, try to speak at conferences and local events as much as possible. Uh -huh. And uh, But here, I'm primarily in the .NET area and huh? programming languages. Talking Answering to questions. Who it has, questions. You have an E on your I have an E. Uh, I'm currently an expert. That means you're an expert. So, <laughs> there we go. Who am I to argue with the E? I know. <laughs> All right, Bill, thanks so much. Thank you, David.
David, it's wonderful to be here again at Microsoft Ignite, speaking about technology and friends, and getting our technology friends interested in C-Sharp 8.